Welcome to Coach's Roundtable. I'm Ed Coding. Welcome our guest, one of the best sports writers in the country from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette and host of the Cook and Joe show on 93.7 The Fan. Welcome Ron Cook. Ron, nice to have you on. Ed, it's always a pleasure to join you, my friend. I hate to start off with the negative, but uh, Ron, that hockey loss last night from the Pens to a terrible Chicago team. Now they have to rely on help from, uh, they have to have Montreal beat the Islanders correct, and then they have to beat the Jets. What's your take on that loss last night? Yeah, it was. I think it's the worst loss of regular season loss of the Sidney Crosby era. I can't ever remember one worse. That was a team that came in and lost 11 out of its previous 12 games, Chicago. Uh, hadn't, got, hadn't lost every one of those 11 games by at least two goals, so they weren't even coming close. And the Penguins, with so much on the table, a chance to really secure, take a big step towards securing a playoff spot, get beat. And it was just hard to watch, hard to fathom. And now they need the Islanders to lose, not just lose, but lose in regulation to Montreal. And then have, uh, then they have to beat Columbus tomorrow night. Uh, I, you know, this is, this is what they are. They lost nine games this year. Uh, when they led after the second period, that is an unbelievable amount. Two of those games were to the Islanders within a four-day span in February that they blew third-period leads. You know, even a point or two, how nice would that look now against the Islanders? So you get what you deserve in sports and generally in life, and, and the Penguins deserve to, to be on life support. Quite frankly, Ed, I don't think they're a very good team. They're older and they're slower. And they're, you know, just running on fumes almost to me. Uh, Ron, uh, I, I couldn't put it better than the way you phrased the whole thing. And you look at it, you talk about the third period. I think there's something like now a minus 12 in goal differential. Uh, the big three, uh, Crosby and, and uh, of course, Malkin and Latang, they did their job. But, Ron, no help from the third and fourth lines this year. No, and the general manager is going to end up answering for that. I, I don't see how Hextall survives this season. Uh, some of the moves that he made, some of the guys that he brought in, some of the guys that he sent away are doing great things elsewhere. Uh, so I don't think he survives. But, you know, no secondary scoring, you're right. The defense has been hurt. And it isn't very good even when it's healthy in the goaltending. Uh, you know, has been so shaky. Again, Jari got outplayed last night by uh, Morazic, who who came in with like a nine and twenty three record. Uh, it, he just outplayed him, and we've seen that happen too many times with Jari. Uh, they got some big questions to answer in the off season, but I have to think one of the first things is that uh, Hextall probably will be replaced. Uh, Ron, you mentioned the goaltending, and, and it has been uh, bad at times. But I, I look at one point there, there was a two-game stretch where there were 80 shots on goal. So the goaltenders weren't really getting much help from their uh, supporting cast and defense. No, and that's been a problem. Now, I thought they tightened it up the previous two games when they won in Detroit and then beat Minnesota. They only gave up a goal in each one of those games. And certainly cut down the odd man rushes tremendously. And last night it wasn't so much a problem. It just, you know, uh, Mike Sullivan used the word opportunistic to describe Chicago's goals. I mean, the Penguins outshot them, at least out attempted them. I believe it was 86 to 42, but they just couldn't score. And then, you know, Jari gave up two in a span of, what, 26 seconds to go from one to one to three to one. And they, you knew they were cooked at that point. It, it just, the longer that game went on, when they couldn't score, you just felt like it's not going to be their night and they're going to regret this one for a long time. And I, I think they will regret this for a long time. Ron, when you say a long time, do you believe that window is now closed on another run for a cup? Well, you have to start to think that way. They, they went out in the first round in each of the last four years. They haven't won a playoff series since, what, 2018. Um, so, you know, you got to believe what you're seeing. You know, when people show you who they are, believe them. And I know the last two years they felt like they had, if they had goaltending, hadn't Jari, hadn't the Smith, hadn't been hurt, they'd have beat the Rangers the year before. You know, if they had goaltending, they would have beat the Islanders. But you just have to wonder. These guys are getting older. Uh, it's not just Crosby and Malkin and Latang. Uh, you know, it's the oldest team in the league. 
and they're stuck with some big salaries. Jeff Carter has a big contract. He looks done to me. Uh, they brought in this Granlin. He gave them nothing, and uh, they're paying him big for the next couple of years. Some of Hextall's moves have just been astonishing. Well, let's move on from the Pens and take a look at the Pirates. They start off six of their first nine. They win. Brian Reynolds looked like a reincarnation of Willie Stargell. Took back-to-back -back series against Boston and, and the uh, White Sox. Split with Houston, a dramatic win on the Bays. A walk-off three-run homer in the bottom of the ninth. Are, are you ready to break out the Green Weenie, uh, the Babushka, and the Benny Benack? The Bucks are going all the way, Saul and Ron. Uh, and you're an old guy, too, bringing, <laughs> yeah. back, those, bringing back those memories. Uh, no, obviously not. With Cruz getting hurt like that on Sunday, Terrible. that's just a killer move, uh, just a kick in the gut for them. I mean, this isn't just a franchise with a bad owner, bad ownership. It's a cursed franchise. And for them to lose Cruz, um, it, it, probably, you know, maybe the, their face of their franchise, certainly maybe their most exciting player, and now he's going to be out four months. It's a long season. I'm glad they're seven and four. They've got off to a nice start. Keller looked great again last night, uh, which I think is great for them. Oviedo had a big game if they can get Contreras going. But without, without Cruz in the lineup, and, and it's going to end up cut, catching up to them. And I tell people, you know, they're excited about seven and four. But I said, remember last year, they went five and one against the Dodgers, including sweeping them in L.A., and they still lost 100 games. So it's a very long season. I don't like their chances of, uh, uh, you know, doing too much without Cruz. Uh, I had them at 67 wins. I think you had them a little bit more. What did you have them, 72? I had them at 72. I'm going to stick with that. That would be a 10-game improvement over last year. Uh, you know, they're 62 and 100 now. I'm 72, 90. And it may go down without Cruz. Ron, uh, with, with four straight uh, last-place finishes, back-to-back, 100-loss -back, season, uh, should we believe at all anything that the Nuttings are going to turn this around? This is going to be a team that will contend for a Central Division title, uh, make it to the playoffs in the coming years. Is there anything there that you see we should believe in? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, they have some pretty good young kids coming up through the system. Uh, and if if some of them pan out, they're not all going to. But if some of them pan out, I could see them having a window, you know, where they might be able to compete just like in, in 13, 14, and 15. You know, when the McCutcheons and Neil Walkers and those guys all came up, now, they were able to add guys like A.J. Burnett and Russell Martin, and I don't know what what Nutting's going to do with that uh, this year when the time is right. They keep saying they'll spend payroll when the time is right, but it always seems like the time is never right. But Ben Charrington, uh, they've had some high draft choices. Uh, their farm system is getting pretty good rave reviews, but, man, it, as I said, it just seems like the franchise is cursed. And with Cruz going down like that, my goodness, he just hated to see it. Hey, Ron, finally, I, 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 I gagged to use the word fair and nuttings in the same sentence, but have they offered Brian Reynolds what you consider to be a fair contract? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I do, uh, you know, but it's backloaded and Reynolds wants out of it. So, I mean, I understand he has everything to gain, and they and and if he plays really well and he wants out after four years and they give it to him, he'll sell himself to the highest bidder. And if he gets hurt or he happens to underachieve, he'll still have those next four years guaranteed for like $107 million. You know, maybe give him an opt-out after the fifth year instead of the fourth year, or maybe pay him a little more in those first four years as opposed to backloading it. It's a tough situation. I, I, I mean, uh, I understand why the Pirates don't want to give them the opt-out. Uh, you know, people say pay him, pay him, pay him, but you know, it is a business too. You don't, you don't want to pay him and then have him leave you after four years. So, uh, I, it looks like a stalemate to me. I'm starting to think it's not going to get done, but maybe they'll be able to find some common ground. Hey, Ron, always great talking with you. And before we know it, I'll, I'll be seeing you. Akershore Stadium at a pit football game. It's right around the corner. All right, Ed. Look forward to it. Always uh, appreciate you having me. Take care. Thanks, Ron. I'll be right back with Alan George. Armstrong has been a part of Butler County since 1963. 
we helped you get online with Zoom Internet. Our Breaking Bread program began fighting hunger in our communities. Enhanced Wi-Fi delivered coverage, security, and control of your network. Zoom Extreme brought internet speeds up to one gig to the community. And in 2022, Armstrong was named CableFax Independent Operator of the Year for the second time. When you support Armstrong, you're supporting your local community. I am back, joined to my right by the Swami George Abraham, to my left the Tiger Albert Campman. Guys, boy, spring sports are really heating up. Let's go to uh, Spotlight, girls high school track, multiple event winners and record winners. Ali Pry of Montetal, 100 meters, 300 meter hurdles she won, and she was a member of the 400 meter relay winning team. Uh, Megan Bajetta of Butler, Butler County uh, Track and Field Classic at Freeport. She had a meet record and a triple jump of 38-7. Her best is 38-11 and a half. That places her in the top 25 in the country. Claire Real of Seneca Valley, Grace Lazara of North Catholic, Madison McGarrah of Butler, and Abby Nichols of Grove City. They were all two event winners at the Classic in Freeport. Sophia Bonetto of Carn City in the dual meet. She won the 800, the 1600, and the 3200. And in boys track, Levi Prementine, Slippery Rock High School, won three events at the Butler County Track and Field Classic at Freeport, the 110 hurdles, the 300 hurdles, and the high jump. He's one of the best all-around athletes in the county this year. I remember seeing uh, Every sport. a highlight on Twitter, him throwing one down, and I thought, okay, yeah. <laughs> got my attention. Uh, Landon Lacey of Butler, he won the 400 relay and the 1600 relay winning team member, and he also won the 400 high school softball. How about this pitcher? Seneca Valley sophomore pitcher, Lexi Hams. She struck out 17 North Allegheny hitters in a 2 to nothing one hit shutout win for the Raiders, who are 5-0. and In her last four games, she's given up one run and struck out 73. And NA pitcher, Sammy Plotsko, she's going to win most of the games. She only gave up two runs and four hits in seven innings, and she was a loser. Yeah, it's hard to lose when you don't get any runs up. <laughs> oh, this girl, this girl, she's just a sophomore. They're going to be knocking down the doors of recruiters yes, on her. Yes, it looks like it. Uh, Gracie Hench of Knock, she had three hits. Uh, Carissa Techley of Knock, uh, three RBI. Uh, Maddie Wolf of Butler, three RBI. Gracie Negley of Butler, uh, she had four runs, four hits, excuse me, uh, a triple, two RBIs. Pitcher Kelsey Ogan of Butler, she had 10 strikeouts. And pitcher... Marley Frazier of Knox, she had three hits and a shutout win. High school baseball, Grady Wozniak of Knox, three hits. Uh, Chase Winstead of Mars, three RBI. Benji Ashbury of Mars, three RBI. And Freeport pitchers, Dustin Rape with 11 Ks and Zach Clark, they combined on a no hitter, three to nothing win over Deer Lakes. Andrew Hart of North Allegheny, three hits. Pitcher Michael Hands of Freeport, a one hit shutout win over Deer Lakes. And, and I, is this, I don't think this is a typographical error. 6'11 knock freshman pitcher Zane Pasek, a complete game 7 2 win over Highlands. He did have a 6'11 basketball player, so that could be him. Yeah, 6'11 mm -hmm. when he that delivers that him. ball. Mm -hmm. You're too far away. No, <laughs> he's on top of you. Hey, in basketball all star game, Butler's Ryan Poor, she scored 22 points in the Cager Classic. It was named MVP. And girls, a Fab Five basketball with the Post Gazette, Jasmine Timmerman. 5'8", senior guard from North Allegheny. She averaged 16 points a game, career 1,200-plus points, three WPL titles and one state. She is signed with Pitt. Elena Rocco for a North Catholic, 5'10", junior guard, 17 points a game. She has over 1,100 for her career, three WPL titles. She is committed to Harvard. She has another year to go. PG all-class teams, Fab 5, 6A boys, Jonathan Anderson of Newcastle, Isaiah Bruce of Newcastle, Braylon Littlejohn of Butler, and 5A, Tasso Stefanos of Mars, and 3A, Joseph Roth of Elwood City, the junior, and in girls 6A, Jasmine Timmerson of North Allegheny, and Madison Sebasky of Pine Richland, and in 5A, Megan Murray of Hampton, 4A, Elena Rocco of North Catholic, and boys lacrosse. Kyle McEwen of Mars, he had five goals and an 18 to nothing win over Freeport. Mars, another powerhouse. They are 10 and 0 on the season. Every year. Yeah. Let's go to our stories of the week. Well, I hate to start off with a negative, but the Pens, they had their backs to the wall. I think that wall is falling on their backs. Disappointing loss to a terrible Chicago team, 5 to 2. Now they have to beat Columbus at Columbus. 
and they have to hope that Montreal beats the Islanders, but they have to beat them in regulation. If it goes to overtime, the Islanders are in, the Panthers are in, and the Pens 18 year streak of the playoffs is over. Yeah, it's over. They had a chance last night. There's, those things are not happening. No excuse, again. right? To lose a yeah, home? Yeah, it's lost. The Chicago Blackhawks are not a good and and and, and lost. I'm I mean, telling you, I'm at the barber shop. The guy says to me, he says, "I was going to bet the Penguins tonight." He said, "But you only win two dollars for ten. <laughs> That's <laughs> the odds five are to one. The odds are amazing. Uh, it's, it's it's incredible, but yeah. it's such a, a a disappointing loss. And that, I think that window is now closed." <laughs> on the National Hockey League's oldest team. You have their big three, uh, Crosby, Malkin, and Latang. They're all in their mid-30s or older. They've done their part, but the third and fourth lines have been terrible. No contributions at all from those lines. Yeah, they're, they should be looked at and, and pointed to. There's no question about it. Falls on the GM, doesn't it? Yeah, well, it falls on GM and the, and the players. They, they sure didn't step right. up. and do, They did zero all year. Uh, you know, all, all you want to do is... is Take the off, put the the puck in the offensive zone. Keep it down there. Wear the other team down. They do nothing like that for us. And, and I know the goalies, uh, uh, Jari and Casey DeSmith, took a lot of criticism. A lot of it deserved, but they didn't get much help and support defensively. Remember, I mentioned that two game stretch where there were eighty shots on goals. Yeah. What goalies going to? Yeah, some of them are going to get in. I some mean, of them are going to get in yeah. at that point, right? Uh, when they were in their heyday last night, for example, that game they win that game seven five. See, that's why the goal, they, they never talked about the goalies before because they would get four goals up and still win. Yeah. Now, they don't score. So if, if, they, if the goalie gives up three or four goals, they're going down the two. How many years without a playoff <clears throat> win? Four straight years mm-hmm. without, without a loss in the first round. Okay. And they, they got to, I mean, they're break the team up. I mean, it, it, they're, it's time. And they're they're going to keep those guys. They got guys with big contracts who did absolutely little or nothing this year, and they're stuck with that's those a killer. contracts. Yeah, that's, that's a killer. I, that's a problem. Hey, Sidney Crosby, he's uh, his 1,500th uh, point in a 5-1 win over Detroit. He's just 223 behind uh, team leader Mario Lemieux. 550 goals, 950 assists, uh, most of any active National Hockey League player. Malkin is fourth with 1,227. And around the National Hockey League, how about Connor David? 150 points over this season, the most since Mario Lemieux's 161 in 95-96. And it tells you how great Lemieux was. And I put on, I put it last year, I said he's the third best play I've ever seen. Ever. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I saw Gretzky's the best. Lemieux was behind. And McD- that's McDavid. I mean, he's just phenomenal. He dominates the game. I mean, dominates his the His speed game. is, is And his size and his ability. Amazing. Yeah, he's unbelievable. All right, let's go to Major League Baseball. Albert, are you ready to get out the green weenie and your babushka and the Benny <laughs> Benack? The Bucks are going all the way musing. The Pirates, seven and four, win uh, their first six of their first nine and then split here with Houston and win in a dramatic fashion on base, walk off, three run home run. Reynolds, just tremendous five home runs in the first, what, seven games, 13 RBIs, nothing done like that since Willie Stargell play for the Pirates, but on a sad note, O'Neill Cruz, a fractured left angle, and, and I didn't see the slide. They it's said it was a bad slide. Not ankle, Did he? Real bad he slide. Be, yeah. Yeah. Late. Yeah. They yeah. said ankle in the paper. Yeah, they were way wrong. Yeah. Um, way late on the slide. It looked like he got caught between Did whether the slide or go under, and it went bad. It, was, it, it looked bad. He slid too late. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 Nothing dirty about it at all. No. Zero dirty. That's, yeah. So and now he's out for four months. You might as well say the season's over. So I, I wonder now, how, how does that work, the, the clock ticking? Does he lo- This year doesn't count as his second season in the majors, so he I still has that. four? I would think or do they so count? many games. I'm not sure. <clears throat> is that what it is? You, 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 you wonder about I mean, that's that. Not fair. He shouldn't lose a year for seven games, ten games. Uh, David Bednar, four saves in the first nine games. He, he's on pace for like 60 saves. I know that's crazy. Well, so. the problem is what it already appeared last night. You know, yeah. those, when you're pitching every day. You're pitching too much. Yeah, It's a long season. I tell Jordan last last year, he, got, he had a sore and uh, That's what's going to happen again. Yeah. It's going to happen again. And if that guy <laughs> makes that throw, he gets out of that. That short so it was a nice play, but the ball should have been scooped. But I'm just so, saying he's out there yeah. every day. It's going to happen. Yeah, yeah you can't. You yes, can't. five times. How many games? <laughs> Ten games? Are you going to pay 81 yeah. games? So, yes. So now, now what? Brian Reynolds on his hot start. Uh, he has not signed that offer for, from the Pirates of uh, 104 million for eight years. What, George, roughly 13 and a half million yeah, yeah, a, a year. 
uh, guy, should he continue to wait? You know he's not going to stay this hot. Is that a fair enough deal, $13.5 million over eight years? Well, I think he's got the leverage now. He said, show me. I told you how good I am. He's Pay me. me. Yeah. Well, you know, what, so. what, what happened in the other, in the other <laughs> point is, what if he goes into a prolonged slump? Yeah. I mean, it, could, it works both ways. But right now I'm talking about yeah, at right this moment. Now. Yeah, he's got the two leverage. numbers, and I guess they met pretty close in the middle, and it was about 105 or something. See, for it, me, see, for eight years, that guaranteed money, $104 million, I know. I'd say you take it. That's like Lamar Jackson. But you know what? Down that good. $13 million. Don't get me wrong. God bless. Yeah. We taught 50 yeah. years. For, yeah. But in today's yeah. Major League Baseball, $13 million is not what those guys are he making. Wants, uh, he wants I, to be I, able to get out of it. Well, that's I, all. I, that's, I, if, I, they, if they let him say after three years, you can go wherever you want to go. He'll sign, but that he, he wants to be able to do that. He knows because he knows the Yankees will give yeah. him 30 million. Yeah, no, that, yeah. That's, that's right. I, and I said this to Ron mm-hmm. Cook. I want to gag on using fair and the nothings in the same yeah. sentence, but yeah. I think they've offered him a relatively fair contract. For the Pirates. For, for the Pirates, yeah. <laughs> no, that. that has to be said. Yeah. Because I just saw San Diego <laughs> take on a billion dollars in debt. Oh, it's just crazy. And, 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 and Albert, I agree with you, and you say there needs to be a floor for Major League Baseball, and there isn't one. And as long as it's like that, yeah. you see all these players are going to be great for the part. Now, Bednar, he continues like, yes, you know they're going to be the Yankees. They're yeah, going to come gone. knocking at the door. Yankees are just going. <coughs> you know waiting. what, too, though? If you have the floor, you have to have a hard cap. Yes. You know, they, but they, 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 the no. powerful owners won't do no, it. No, they, they don't. The Mets don't Why care. would the Mets or San Diego want a hard cap? $370 million. Yeah, concert. against 30. A, a baseball nostalgia, a, a, PG article by Gene Collier on baseball passings, how it lessens a game. All the stars have passed away. Mentioning this season, uh, Tim McCarver, Gaylord Perry, Nate Colbert, Frank Thomas, Sal Bando, and Joe uh, Pepitone. And mentioned that on uh, April the 7th, it was the 50th anniversary of Roberto Clemente being presented with his 12th gold glove posthumously before 50,000 fans at Three Rivers, accepted by his wife, Vera Clemente. And then pointly points out old timers games and one where Yogi Bear is standing on, uh, they had the national anthem standing along the baseline and a giant scoreboard listing the recently deceased, deceased major league players to which Yogi Bear said, boy, I hope someday I don't read my name up there. <laughs> <laughs> he always had famous lines. He always, always. had, you know but what? it's it, true how many great players he, passed he was, away. He was year. quite a guy, though. There was a story <laughs> that one of his former teammates got Alzheimer's was in assisted living. He would drive there every day and sit with him until the guy fell asleep and he'd leave. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, he was a, and there aren't many guys, you know, that old one name thing, Yogi. Mm-hmm. And 50 years after he played, it was still like that. He quit yes. playing in the 70s, right? Mm-hmm. 60s? You know, Casey Stengel always said he was his number one best clutch hitter. He always was. And a bad ball hitter. He hit a, yeah. he hit a ball up his eyes. He hit it Four off his Four or five MVPs, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Tre- just tremendous. Yeah, think... Wait. Catch? Yeah. Left field? I know. First base? Oh, yeah. Play everywhere. Yeah. That's how good he was. Yeah. Uh, only like 5'8", five, 5'9", five, no, 180 he 80 man, pounds. Yeah. Well, he wouldn't play today. They would say, yeah, we'll give him a chance. No, he's not big enough. No, I'm not. No, I wouldn't. They wouldn't give him a chance. Yeah, I, I Anybody 5'8 hey. or 5'9 who can't run, they will not even think about looking yeah. at you. Hey, hey, the thing <laughs> about the Pirates for the long run, you know, Keller's doing just fine, but the starting pitching is, is, isn't is enough for them. It's, That's where they have, to, they have to make a deal to get a starting, some starting pitching, no question. Yeah. Will they? I don't know that. Yeah. Hey, the NFL, uh, two weeks away from the second biggest event in the – NFL season, the overrated NFL draft. People pass up their their anniversaries, well, their 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 daughter's oh. birthday party to dress up in war paint and go to these ev- events. Coming up uh, the board, how about oh that? They God. haven't played in four months, and <coughs> some dude is coming up. I watched that dude play at Penn State. He ain't coming up. How, how many times you see the? The, the uh, Jets fans, they're all excited. We've yeah. gone for 20 years, they've been excited, and yeah. nothing's happened. No, absolutely. Uh, the Ravens signed 30 year old Odell Beckham Jr. one year between 15 to 18 million dollars. Good move for the Ravens, desperate for a receiver. It's good for the Steelers because <laughs> he can't play anymore. Yeah. <laughs> no, he now, let me ask you is that a harbinger of the fact he must think? His buddy's going to sign. That's the not? plan. That's the plan. That's yeah. the plan. Yeah, that's Lamar's the plan. going to sign. They said they were out yeah. together. The that's other the plan. Night. Hey, college football spring games coming up, Pitt and Penn State, and yet I'm hearing coaches saying 
they're so worried about players being injured wow. during the spring. And I said, that, that, but coach, why are you scrimmaging? Uh, for I, I always think fewer players get hurt more during drills than they do actually in scrimmages. And now some coaches, the new Auburn coach, he wants to have local spring games like an FBS team yes. or a local FCS team, yeah. which means Pitt would scrimmage Duquesne, Penn State, my building over Bucknell yeah, sure, or someone yeah. like that. What do you guys think about that? Good idea? It'd be great if when, uh, uh, when two pit players go down against Duquesne. We'll yeah. see what they, we'll yeah. see, how, we'll so see what they say then. See how much you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 I, I, Frank and we do the first time one of his guys tears his ankle up playing Bucknell. You know what, you know you, how you find out if you're a good player or not yeah. or a bad player? They put the bad players in the scrimmage. When the scrimmage is going yeah. live, yeah. if you're playing that scrimmage, you know. Ooh, he doesn't like you too much. It was Coastal Carolina. They hold all the good players out. Or something. They were playing Alabama, and they played all their backups. So I'm thinking, what if you're the quarterback's mom? You're like, wait a minute. Johnny didn't play all year, but now we're yes. playing the Crimson yeah. Tide. And, 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 and I chuckle when I hear Narduzzi say, well, there's a quarterback battle going on. Listen, there's no quarterback battle. If it's not going to be Jacoby. I'd be shocked. He's with Frank Signetti, who was his coach at Boston College. I don't, I don't they have to it. say that all the time. Yeah, they say it all the time. Hey, let's finish with the Masters. Heat, rain, wind, blown over trees. Uh, Spaniard John Rahm, he uh, 12 under, wins his uh, second major and fourth victory of the season. How about Phil Mickelson? While Rahm was 12 under, Mickelson finished tied for second, eight under at age 52, the oldest player ever to finish uh, mm -hmm. That high, and with a low score, he tied the low score of Rom with a 65. But Brooks kept going. How about this guy? Tied for second, and he went 22 straight holes without a birdie. Yes. That's why he lost. <laughs> That's why he lost, yeah. Hey, I want to finish with college basketball. The men's title game, UConn San Diego State, the lowest uh, viewed uh, final on record, fewer than 15 million viewers, yet the most watched basketball game of the year. Uh, looking at Portal Power, just at UConn, you know, last year they lost that first round game to Mexico State, brought in four transfer. Every players. team's going to do it. Change it. Every it's team's the power do it. of the transfer yeah, portal. Absolutely. Hey, that's it for us. We're out of time. Thanks for joining us. We will see you next week. How do you choose the smart home and security system that's right for your family? The answer is Guardian Protection, a fully integrated system so that all your smart home and security devices work together, like smart locks, smart lights, doorbell cameras, video cameras, and more. And with advanced artificial intelligence technology, Guardian Protection creates a smarter, safer home for you, all controlled from one single app. The right choice for your family. Some companies will tell you they have the best customer service. No, I'm sorry. That's not a part of our policy. We can't really help you there. Some companies will tell you they have the best technical support. Yeah, let me just put you yeah, on to somebody from technical hours, support right no now. Sense. Please hold. No, don't put I don't need tech support. Your tech technical support, how can I help you? Some companies will tell you that your call is very important. <laughs> Only Armstrong provides you with the customer service you deserve.